Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my Python 2.5 through 2.7 tutorial, where I'll explain everything you want to know about the Python programming language. First, I'm going to show you, I'm sorry I didn't show you this in the past, the way to make your code, your Python code, an actual executable. Now, if I type in ls, it's going to show me all of the different code that I have here. And oh, by the way, if I jump back to Eclipse, you can see this is the basic hello world type of program. Well, I want to make it into an executable. Now, of course, I could execute it by typing in Python code 3 dot and it's going to print hello world to the screen. However, if I would type in instead, it's not going to allow me to execute that code without calling for the Python program to execute it for me. However, if I come in here, type in change mod a plus x followed by test code 3.py and execute that, I'm now going to be able to execute this onto the screen, just like it was a regular application. So all you need to do, remember, is chmod a plus x followed by your Python code name and, of course, put the location of your interpreter here and everything will work itself out. Now I'm going to jump into conditionals. What conditionals allow you to do is run certain lines of code if certain conditions are met and run other versions of code if conditions are not met. And to do this inside of Python, we use the if statement. And as well, there's something called the conditional expression, which I'll get into here. But there is no switch statement, but I'll show you how to create a facetto switch statement inside of Python. So let's say you wanted to check on somebody's age. Well, we're going to create a variable called your age, and we're going to surround it with the int function so that we can convert this string into an integer that we'll be able to test. And we're going to ask them, how old are you? And then inside of Python, unlike almost all other programming languages, white space is extremely important. There are no semicolons at the end of statements. So Python knows when you hit a new line and go to the next line that that is the end of the statement. Well, with the if statement, what we're going to do here is we're going to check if the value they entered is equal to 35 in my situation. And we're going to note that this is the beginning of an if statement by putting a colon in here. See, it automatically indented. Now, everything that remains indented is going to be executed if your age is actually equal to 35, as you're going to see. I'm just going to have one thing here that you could put many. And if their age is entered as 35, it's going to print as the screen, same as me. Now I'm leaving this. I don't want any other statements executed, so I have to get rid of that tab. And also all your white space has to be exactly the same distance from the left inwards. That's very important. And I'm just going to simply say, if that is not true, then else I want to print different from me to the screen. And that's it. If I hit F5, how old are you? Let's say I'll enter 33, and it says different from me. Okay, real simple. Now let's say you wanted to check for multiple different conditions because this isn't very useful on its own. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what is often called an else if, but in Python it's called an ill if. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to check for a different condition. So let's say, and by the way, you don't have to put these braces here, but I just think it's easier to read and that's the reason why I do put the braces in there. So I'm going to say is greater than 35. And then I'm going to issue a different set of statements, or one different statement. So I'm going to check if the age is 35, print this to the screen. If the age is greater than 35, I'm going to print this to the screen. And guess what? Else, this will always be executed if the first statements are not executed. And let's run that. How old are you? Let's say 60, 56. Older than me. So that's the basics of an if elif else statement. Remember the colon here and remember the white space. Very, very, very important. You could also do compound if statements. So let's go if your age is greater than zero and there's another operator for you. I went over the and operator previously. There's a, This is the most common way to use that operator. I'm going to check. I'm just going to guess that the person that's doing this is more than likely going to be a positive age, obviously, or they are going to be younger than 120. I'm not trying to age discriminate here. I'm going to tab this in, tab this in. Remember, make sure everything stays the same distance apart. Very important. And then what I'm going to do here is all of these statements are executed if both of these come back true. And if not, put my else statement down here. And don't forget to put the colon here. And if we execute this, 
How old are you? Let's say I type in 145. It's going to say don't lie about your age. So it's going to skip over all of this code and jump down here to this else statement and print this out. Now, of course, I could have checked for this condition and then elif and then checked for this condition, but this is a lot easier to understand, I think you would agree. And that's the basics of the if statement. Now, inside of Python, there is no such thing as a switch statement. And if you do not know, I'm going to show you here briefly what a switch statement normally looks like. It's normally the word switch, and this is very common in most programming languages. It's just Python doesn't have a variable passed, let's say. So the switch statement is normally passed a certain variable. And in most programming languages, you also have these curly braces. Python does not use them either. And then normally what you see is something like case, IU1, followed by a colon, and then perform certain actions, followed by break, which you're going to hear about in the next tutorial. And then a whole bunch of these case statements. What it's going to basically do is, like, let's say, for example, this is your age. What it would do is it would check, okay, is your age one? And then perform a certain action. And then there would be another case statement underneath of this. So for example, let's just copy this. And let's say the next one's two. And it would print out a specific message or perform certain different statements over and over and over and over again. So it's just checking on an individual basis what these different values are. And then normally your switch statement has something like default instead of the else statement that you saw previously. And then it performs default actions. Okay, this is what switch looks like in almost every programming language. Python does not have a switch statement. But basically, you could implement a switch statement much like I previously showed you by just using a basic if statement. So it would be if your age is equal to 1 colon perform certain actions. L if your age is equal to 2 perform certain actions. And this is the most understandable way to do or to create a switch statement. There are very complicated ways that would just confuse you. I could, I could do very different complicated things here. But this is just the basic ways that you would implement a switch statement inside of Python because it does not exist. And then finally, we have what is called a conditional expression. So let's put the hash symbol here. And remember... With the commented out lines, they're completely ignored by the interpreter. Oh, and by the way, this is how you would create a multi-line comment. Just put in three quotes, followed by all of the comment you wanted to make, and then followed by three additional quotes. That's how you would create a multi-line commenting statement. I got a question about that in email. But this is the conditional expression. What we're going to do here is we're going to define two variables. And this is a shortcut way to define those two variables. So it's going to store 1 in x and 0 in y. And then what we're going to do is change the value of a based off of the values of x and y. Meaning we're going to store a certain string. Meaning this string here, if this condition is met, meaning that y is less than x. Else, we are going to store a different string in A if this condition is not true. And then we can print A to screen and we'll answer this one real quick. Y is less than X was stored in the variable A because the condition was true that Y indeed was less than X, meaning that Y had a value of zero and X had a value of one. And those are how you use conditional statements inside of Python. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Till next time.